Hey everyone. So someone recently said they were enjoying my Fortran 77 videos on the channel. And I realized I, I'd stopped before I got to a really interesting feature in Fortran. Actually, I, should, I say interesting, but it's really just an interesting source for uh, tricky bugs. And that is the computed go-to. So uh, let's write a program to show how to use a computed go-to in a Fortran program. So uh, we're going to start with open Whatcom Fortran, and we're going to uh, set our uh, environment with OW set env, and that sets up our environment. All right, and so let's uh, switch over to my source directory. I've got that over my D drive, and we're going to demonstrate the Colats conjecture. So uh, with the Colats conjecture, uh, by the way, let's go and edit our, our file. So we'll start a new file here called I don't have anything here. Let's do a uh, VI on a program called colats.f. Uh, so for this, I'm going to be using uh, VI. Uh, there's a version of VI provided in the open Fortran compiler. So uh, OW set env already has that uh, in my environment. So the colats conjecture, what is that? So that says, let's actually write a document here. Let's put this in the comment. So the colats conjecture, I'll put this on. Colats conjecture uh, says uh, you uh, start with a number, uh, an, an integer, uh, and um, if it's odd, then you uh, multiply times three, three times n, and then you add one. Or if it's even, you just divide by two. And so the conjecture is um, that all starting point numbers uh, go to one. That's, that's the conjecture. And so we can write a program that uses that very simple formula to get there. And there is a better way to do this algorithm, but I'm demonstrating the computed go-to. So let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to uh, start a program here. Let's start right here. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we've got a program uh, called that. And I need to have an integer variable. So we'll do an integer of n. Uh, and of course, you don't need to have the spaces between the, the keyword integer and the variable n. You could do that just fine. Uh, uh, but the thing is that the VI isn't going to detect that as a, <laughs> as a keyword. So I'm going to try and put spaces in here so you can see it. Uh, and of course, the other important thing is in Fortran 77, uh, all statements uh, need to have six blank columns in front of them. So um, let's, uh, so here we've got our integer N. Let's go ahead and print out uh, what we're doing here. The, uh, the Colats conjecture, uh, and then uh, let's go ahead and uh, read a starting value. So we'll do print star, uh, enter a starting n, and that has to be n of greater than or equal to one. And so uh, we need to do, uh, this, will, this will probably be a starting point that we need to, see that'll be up here. Uh, this will be a starting point. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, get rid of some characters here. Put in a, a line number. And then uh, here we're going to do uh, read star, oops, caps, read star, and then into the variable n. Now we need to make sure that n is greater than or equal to 1. And so we will say if uh, n is less than 1, then go to 10. All right, so now the conjecture can happen. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, print... Uh, the value of n. And you know what? We're going to keep looping back to this. We're going to start with, uh, we're going to make this um, make this a, a line label. We're going to print star n. And uh, let's, um, let's do the conjecture. So the conjecture is if it's an odd number uh, or if it's an even number. And so one thing that we can do is we can do modulo. And so we'll do a comment here. So modulo uh, is the remainder uh, after division. And so, uh, for example, um, if I do a, uh, and the function for that is mod, if I do a mod of n comma 2, that's, that's, uh, that's n 
uh, the remainder, the remainder uh, after n divided by 2. So for an uh, even number, that mod will be 0. Uh, and then for an odd number, the mod will be 1, because I'll have one left over. So uh, computed go to is kind of a tricky thing. So uh, computed go to looks like this. Computed go to. You have uh, the go to statement just like you normally would, but inside parentheses you give a list of statement labels, so line numbers. And so, for example, we might do uh, thirty and forty, and then uh, a value of a variable. Just I don't have a J variable. Let's just say I had a J variable. And so based, oops, I have an extra comma in there. Uh, so uh, based on this, it would say, okay, if J is one, then it'll jump to 30. And if J is two, it'll jump to 40. And if J is outside of that range, if J is uh, zero or less, or J is greater than two, it will fall to the next line after this. And so I want to do, uh, since I'm doing a Majulo, that's going to be zero or one. I'm actually going to just add one uh, to the Majulo. And so I'm going to do, um, we'll do this. We'll say uh, right number of spaces. Yes. And so we'll do a go to, oops, go to uh, 30 comma 40 based on the value of the mod of n and 2 adding 1. And so the mod for an even number will be 0, the mod for an odd number will be 1, except now I'm adding 1 to it, so the mod for a uh, even number will be 1, and the mod for an odd number will be 2. In other words, uh, even numbers will go to 30, and odd numbers will go to 40. Uh, so I'm going to uh, start over here. We'll just put in line number 30. And so this is for uh, even numbers. And we have up at the beginning, uh, we know that n, if it's an even number, n is going to be n divided by 2. And uh, from there, we're going to then jump back up to uh, line 20. Go to. Now, I just realized I don't have anything here after we've printed it out if uh, we actually equaled 1. And so I'm going to say right here, uh, if n is equal to 1, then go to, uh, we'll just say 90. Uh, and so we'll put 90 in a minute. All right, so there's my go to 20. And now 40 is what happens if we have an odd number. And that is going to be n equals uh, 3 times n to add one and then we're going to loop back to the start go to 20. and so that is a computed go to it is uh kind of a neat feature in the program or in the programming language of fortran but it's uh it's also kind of the source of very interesting bugs um and so now that we've done that let's actually now do our line 90 and we'll put that here at the end 90 and for that it's going to be done and so we'll just say prints are uh, done return back to the operating system with ending our program. And so that is how you would demonstrate uh, using a computed uh, go-to. It is uh, kind of wild, uh, but let's go ahead and, and actually run the program. So let's go ahead and save this here. Um, we will now uh, set our DOS4G variable to a quiet, and then we can do .com, Fortran compiler, and linker. We'll do quiet mode of colats.f and now we've compiled our program and you can see that i've got a colats.exe and i just run colat and so if i start with one it should just be done one there it is done now let's do run colats again and if we do two well two is an even number so it should then divide by one or divide by two to get one and it should end at one so starting at two and then starting at two and then it gets to one and then it's done and then it gets actually at three so there's colats and we'll put in a three 
and three is an odd number, so it's gonna multiply times three and then add one, that gets us 10. Well, 10 is an even number, so I can divide that by two, I get five. Five is an odd number, so it'll multiply that times three and add one, so I get 16. Up, oh, 16 is an even number, divide by two. Eight's an even number, divide by two. Four is an even number, divide by two. And of course, two is an even number, divide by two, get to one. So every time you run the coalesce conjecture, the theory is that you're always gonna come down to a, uh, a the value of one. Let's just do five. Let's skip ahead to that. You can see that you know some of these are more interesting values than others. Uh, we'll do actually seven. And yeah, you can see you can, some of these are more interesting values uh, than others. But really, I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, the uh, how to use the computed go to. Uh, it's a a very as I said a very interesting feature, but it's also a very interesting way uh, to get some kind of tricky bugs into your but I want to show it anyway what do you think of this video let me know in the comments below before I go I want to thank everybody who supports me on patreon thank you so much for your support you definitely make this channel happen and uh, special thanks to my gold supporters my sponsors my gold sponsors visit our website at freedust.org join us on Facebook follow us on Mastodon and consider supporting me on patreon and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you